Oh, the rain is nasty. Oh, come on! Oh, this place is brutal. Completely unmaintained. Ah, just ripped my finger on a thorn. Nice. Gonna try and give this one a go. It's called a Benjo Shad, it's a weedless, weedless fishing lure. So you can see it's got the, the hook point there. And it's articulating on this, this jig head here, so you, the, the hook can articulate all around to give it maximum movement. And all you do is because it's a Texas rigged hook, you can tuck that hook point, it comes out the belly like that, just so you can see. And you could tuck that hook point, it's difficult to see, I know, into the back there and that's now weedless so that hook won't snag on any weeds so I can run my finger along it then when a fish comes to bite it from the back here they'll push down here inevitably which exposes the hook point and then bang that hook point should should get them in theory it's worked plenty of times for me before but this one's in a in a black and purple color so we'll give this a go I'm gonna try for a species called Ras or Pollock uh, they're the two species that I'm I'm trying to target here and that's all some other lures and spare line and scented lures and things like that in this plastic bag. On the just clipped onto my bag on the carabiner here, I have a pair of forceps to help get the hook out the fish's mouth if it goes deep hooked. And I also have a pair of snips here, uh, just basically scissors, foldable fold away scissors which are for snipping the line. So as the sun's out, I'm going to make the most of it and charge my power bank here, which I use for charging my camera batteries now with a USB stick as well when they run out. And it is winter, I know it's uh, really warm today, it's about 9 degrees. But this has a solar panel on the front of it, so it can charge via the solar panel and via an actual input here, power input. So two ways of charging it, but this way is free. So I'm going to leave that out in the sun to charge up. You can see the green light there is telling me that it's charging. I'll pop a link to this one in the description if you are interested. Chuck a lure about, it's quite steep up here. Because I'm so high up, this lure is actually not easy to use because I have to cast it all the way out there to wind it in. And really I should be doing that on a level ground, like level to the sea. So I need to be adopting a bit more of a vertical fishing technique, which I might have to do in a minute, like drop shot or something. But if I let this sink down a bit, then hopefully it should get to the depth of the fish. I've just got to try and keep it there for longer, which means a greater chance of a snag which no one wants. The fish are not going to see the lure very well down here in this wash. So I'm trying to get it out in the clearer spots over there. But it's proving very difficult on such a light rod. I can feel the bottom and the weed. Woo. So that lure sadly didn't work. And I think it's because it's so chopped up and coloured the water so I think it's time that they're not going to see this they're going to need to see something super bright 
probably this could be risky because it's it's uh, so uh, this is risky because it's so rocky and it's got a treble treble hook which means snag city brand new one as well what's the benefit of keeping these on the outside the snippers and just put them away they're just easily accessible it's all there front of the bag this can cast a lot further because there's a lot more weight to it but potentially fishing might be better tomorrow when this wind's died down which is forecasted to 20 mile an hour at the moment well guys I've had no luck the wind's really strong at the moment and the sea's just an absolute mess so it's making fishing pretty much impossible impossible i don't think the fish can uh, see the bait very well bait or lure they just can't see it it's so foamed up i don't have a powerful enough rod to get it right out there beyond the, the wash here so i'm going to head along the coastline now and um hopefully try and find a campsite really just a place to camp nice bit of level ground um i was going to do a bit of foraging but the beach i was going to forage at is actually quite far away so it makes sense to do that tomorrow so i'm going to go and find a campsite and um yeah set the tent up in 20 mile an hour winds that's going to be fun and then just chill really enjoy it i'll see you in a minute <laughs> sketchy Woo. very sketchy oh look at the fossil do you see that like an ammonite cool that's why it's called the jurassic coast Uh. Rock climbing. That is like summer. That is beautiful. So this is just how I carry the camera now. Just in my hands. That's where I want to go. All the way down there, just over a mile round to that headland, round to the right. And that's where I, the cliffs are. So I've just walked about 45 minutes down the coast now. Uh, I found a nice open area on the cliffs here. It's slightly sheltered from this wind because we're getting a brutal north northwesterly, northeasterly, sorry, cutting over the cliffs. Uh, so I've had to walk a little bit further to try and find a little sheltered area but where I could still get a sea view, because let's face it, I want a sea view, I've come down to the coast. So I did actually do some fishing earlier, unfortunately didn't catch anything, which is a shame. It's such a nice evening though, although it's windy and it's fairly chilly, it's not freezing because I'm right on the coast, it probably won't, won't freeze here at all, all year round really, because of the salt in the air. But uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a nice sunset, I'd say. So I was fishing for quite a few hours, it's now quarter past three, and I've got two hours of daylight left. So I'm gonna get the tent set up, then probably get some uh, food on the go and have a beer and just chill and enjoy the evening. So you know, in the, te in the tent bag itself comes with these red, they're really good actually, these red tent stakes. They've got some notches in them as well, which really help. Uh, but I've also added an additional three, four, sorry, standard tent pegs you don't want to go wrong really just in case you need the extra tent pegs there's extra tie up points on this tent there are also some seam sealant that came with the tent as well which is pretty cool so a lot of the uk guys use these hex peaks uh up in the lake district peak district things like that that's where i saw them kind of like that cool tarp shelter that i do that's a teepee tarp so i found a spot if you can see i found a sort of Thicker, thicker patch of grass because it's fairly there's rocks all in this area here and it's pretty rock hard <laughs> rock hard but over there it's soft thicker grass and also with this north easterly so obviously sun's setting at the moment in the west over there east is pretty much where the behind the my, the cliffs over here to, that's where that wind's coming from that's why it's so strong
So this is the TP setup, the Lux Hex Peak. And this is a pretty good test to be honest because it's pretty windy today. I'll go through it in a little bit more detail maybe tomorrow when it's less windy. There is an option at the top there for a tie up point. So if you're in the woods and you want to tie up without a center pole, you can attach a bit of cordage to that, put it up around a branch maybe. And that way you can eliminate the center pole and have even more room. This bit does actually have a vent here. If I can get to it, a bit of Velcro there. And then this rigid part pulls out, sticks on the Velcro there. That, that then gives me some ventilation in there. You've got your peg here. At the top, there's just a loop. And I've retied this just to make, this is the extra cordage to make it slacker or, or tighter. It was, I have to admit, it was confusing when I first started to set this up, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. So it, the cord basically pinches on itself underneath this clip, very much like backpack straps. And that, so that's loosening in it. That's loosening it by pulling it there. And obviously I can loosen that cordage to loosen it even more. And then by, to tension it, just lift that clip up like this and pull the loose end tight. And that is now rigid, it's not going anywhere. There is so much room in here. You can see, this is like backpack storage area and I can store all my gear. There's the inner fly sheet with the center pole, which does go onto a reinforced area patch at the center of the tent up there. And this again, this is neat. It's tied out again by these tightening systems here. So you just put the clip on an O-ring over there and then that's the loose end, pull this tight so that you get that nice side wall to your tent to protect from the draft that comes in from the gap. I can drop and lower this centerpiece by just pulling on this tab like that. And then my whole fly net, basically in a fly tent can come down and I could just use that area to sit on if I wanted to. If I wanted to pull it right down, I could do. Let's check the inside of the manor. And that is really spacious. Not long till the sun sets. Beautiful. How peaceful is this? That contrast in colour. Moon's out. Nice crescent moon. Just exploring at the moment. Walking around before it's dark. Tents over there, you can't see it yet. We're dark now, ladies and gents. I want to get this cooked before any rain comes. There's none forecasted, but you never know in England. You just never know. It likes to surprise you, catch you when you least expect it. So simple pasta with a bit of bolognese sauce for today in the billy can. 
This is that uh, Tim, my buddy Tim makes these. I've seen this before, but I've actually stacked it the right way this time. <laughs> he puts these little bags, all these waxed canvas carrying bags. That one's got nothing in it. But inside, I store the pasta in here. If I can undo it, I've done it up so well. There's all the pasta that Tim makes me. Thank you, Tim. No, Tim doesn't make me the pasta. He makes me the, he made me the thing. You hear the seagulls still? I don't want to use loads because I actually want to. Right. I'm going to put the lid on. Make it boil quicker. This is like a self ignite one. Spark. Whoop, there we go. I'm on level ground. Now we just wait. You guys are going nuts. Use that as a little windshield. And just protects it a bit. Look at that, you can just make out the dusk in the background. Sun has set. Setup is good. Gas there. I use the Coleman ones. Don't know if you can get, you can probably get them globally, I don't know. They just work really well here. And then to adjust it, to adjust the power, there's just a little nozzle here. I don't want it too powerful because I want to save it for forage in the morning. Wow, it's nearly boiling. It's a 10 centimeters, everybody. I need lots of carbs because I've got more hiking tomorrow. That's a lot of pasta. <laughs> Whoops. without losing any pasta. It could be fun. I've just mixed a bolognese sauce in there while it's hot in the hope that it will <laughs> warm it up. So, oh that looks good though. Look at that. Bolognese pasta. What more could you want? Nice and simple. Mm. I'm going to get in the tent now. Because that's going to warm up anyway. Is that a bit bright? It's a little bit bright. There we go. Oh yeah. And. By the way, I kept the lid on that, just while I was getting in the tent, keep it all warm. But, I have also got myself another beer. I didn't bring too many beers because of weight, obviously. Also, I don't want to be out peeing all night. And <coughs> if it's, you know bad weather out there on, the coast, on this coast, I'm right on the cliff here. If the bad weather comes in, it will really come in bad and it will be a very un unpleasant experience. However, Brooklyn Lager, coming through strong from the US. They've started doing this at a pub down the road actually, on tap, which is, uh, which is cool. So, Loads of sort of loads of this stuff from the US coming over to the UK now. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, come So this is the 
Yuko gear, original candle lantern. They're a US company, I believe. This is their like original one, but it's it's been uh, matte finished, I think. Established in 90, it must be 71, 1971. These are really cool. So it's basically, effectively, a real candle light that you can have, and it can also sort of act as a torch as well. But it's a real candle light that's that's safe because it's it's all contained. It burns for a, for a very long time. I think the candle I've got in there at the moment is a nine hour candle. So you pull it up like that, which this is glass, it's all glass. There's the candle and that is like a burn time. That's a see-through bit of glass there. And it all, it's very clever if I unscrew it. Here's the candle itself. And under this, the ca it works on a spring system. So you've got the spring there, a little disc to stop your spring cutting into the candle and there's the candle itself so the candle constantly stays at the same height because the spring is always pushing it which is just awesome and such a clever idea I know these are super popular I've seen a lot of uh, subscribers sending me stuff about these so I got one finally and I can see why Like that, stick it in, get it locked in nice and quick, adjust it while it's cold because the glass is going to get warm. This metal plate by the way gets so hot and how cool is that? That stays, that flame stays like that obviously in the wind and everything because it's all concealed by the glass. It's got a metal, metal top protector here which is already hot to stop the flame burning anything as you're hanging it here. But that is really cool. And then I can see how much of the candle is left through this bit here. I love that. It's cold in here, you see my breath. Cool. It's getting colder in, uh, in the air, I can feel it. But I've got my warm, oh, that's putting out a little bit of heat, you know, as well. Pick it up from here at the bottom and it's not hot. I know it'll be hotter near the top as most candles usually are. A normal candle would have probably gone out by now. But because it's protected by the glass, it just stays constant and you know, compact folds down to well half that size really, which is obviously convenient for trips like this. And I've got the old carry case with it as well, the neoprene sort of carry case to protect it and protect the glass. So I found a place for it. Just off the centre pole I've tied a loop. So I don't want the flame too near the edge of the tent or the fly netting here. And that seems about perfect. You can still hear the roar of the ocean. Just amazing. No people, just nature. I can hear the seagulls, I can see, hear the ocean. I've got a candle lantern, I've got beer. It's awesome. Gutted I didn't catch any fish today, but I knew the conditions were completely against me. I think my microphone's broken. Apologies, I heard it go. I just played back some footage and it was all over the place. I think I've broken it because the camera fell down earlier. A couple of times. So I think I've uh, broken it. So I'm gonna have to buy a new one, which sucks, but gotta be done. Apologies, guys. But yeah, the fishing, the reason I didn't catch, number of reasons. First reason is due to the swell of the waves and the wash of the waves that was creating all that sea foam, the fish just wouldn't have been able to see the bait or lure very well. That was one of the, the reasons. Uh, the second reason is because of that, that ocean swell that, where it's all washed up, I couldn't keep a bait, even try to pin it on the bottom like I did with that drop shot rig. I couldn't keep it in the same place which is what I like to do because then I can either tweak it a little bit or, or I can cast in little pockets so I know the fish are. Because of all that swell and that wash, it was just w swooshing the bait out of the, the sort of bite zone. So that's the second reason. Third reason is I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a <laughs> fisherman. <laughs> 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 
That would be dad's reason for me not catching fish. <laughs> oh dear. Do you know, it's nice to have a tent with some headroom, with plenty of room outside of the inner tent to put your gear. I don't know if you watched, if any of you have seen my, back in the summer, last summer I did that five days in the mountains trip. That, I used a tiny tent. I've been using that for years. It was a Gillette Solo, Gillette, Gillette Solo, I think it was. Tiny little tent. And I used that for five, what was it? For, I used a tarp as well, but I used the, the tent for a couple of nights. For facts about this tent, I'll put that up in a box just here. Just some basic facts for you guys. The rest of the actual details of the tent I'll put in the video description below. Um, I believe they are available in America as well as England. Um, I'll, again, I'll put more information in the video description below, but I really like this, uh, really like this tent. Well guys, it's now about 9.30, so it's not super late, but I'm really tired. I wanna get some, I wanna hopefully get a good night's sleep, because I've got plenty of walking to do tomorrow. I've got, I've got about an hour and a half hike to the bay, where I have been before, to this bay, so I'll say good night guys. Hopefully I get a good night. I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow morning. Good morning guys. It is about 6.30 I think. I was woken up by the gulls, you can hear them. Such a nice, such a nice sound. I slept pretty well actually. If you uh woke up a few times, it got way windier than I thought last night. It's meant I thought it was meant to die down, but actually it got a lot more windy than I expected. Uh, it's still quite windy. It's it's cold. I didn't get too cold in the night, but I want to get some breakfast on. Beautiful view. Look at that. Porridge life, baby. Left over some water for a coffee. Oh, yeah. So, this stove is actually really easy to pack away. Obviously, you take the gas off, it's a screw one. That's the carry case it comes in. I've made sure it's cool now, it cools down pretty fast here in the wind. And you just pop the legs off. Legs look like that. Just pop them off. Then I store the legs like that, wrap the... That's corroding quite bad actually. Gotta watch that. See that corrosion? That's the salt where I've been in the salt air. So that's where I use this a lot. I'm gonna have to really watch that. Anyway, that goes in like this. It's nice because it all compacts, obviously really small, but also it's a really low profile stove rather than the one that sits on top of the bottle, which I've got as well. It just means that gets loads of wind under it, whereas this one doesn't get as much wind affecting it. And it just stores in this little carry case like that. Result. Look at that. The sun is coming. I've stored my camera batteries in the sleeping bag last night. I slept with them. Slept with them. Slept with them in the bag. Keep them warm. Put them in my pocket now. So the UK gear handle you just push down like that and that's it and it's ready to, to store away super efficient super simple and easy design love it it's really cool
inside two miles from where I just did that little chat to the camera. And I need to get down here, right at the bottom, and head right. Still a long way yet. Another mile, I'll say. Oh, wow. It's gonna be fun. Oh. <laughs> Jungle City. This is f***ing horrible. Why did I do this? Oh, finally a bit of fresh air. Okay, major problem guys. I know that doesn't look very far down. There's been a massive landslide here and it's made this pretty much like quicksand, like a huge bog. I can see where people have tried to tread before and that's about two or three feet deep when you, when you go in it. I mean, my trainers, let me show you on my other camera, the state of my shoes where I've just, look at that. I've gone completely over my boots and that's in the shallow bit. It's just too much. There's been storms and I can't get down at all. I think it's where the storms have just mushed it all up, where this little stream's come in and just turned it all to cement, basically. It's unreal. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to get down, ladies and gents. Tide's, tide's way too far in, either I, I'll get cut off over there. So sadly, that's the, sh the fresh shellfish out the way. Look at this bog, like, look. Look at this. Everywhere is just screwed. It's like Mars. This whole landscape is unbelievable. It wasn't like this before I came. Now it's just completely changed. Dangerously. It's just eroding. Got me some Uncle Ben's Mexican special two minute job rice. back through the swamp oh this place is brutal absolutely brutal jeez oh, this is look at it look how built up it is this is just Completely unmaintained. <laughs> Whoa! Ah, just ripped my finger on a thorn. Nice. not forgiving terrain at all. Ooh. And I've got the weight of the pack on my back as well. Which is not helping. Hey. Guys, I'm back in the car. Uh, apologies, I've had a bit of a mess with camera batteries. The microphone's completely broken on my main camera and it's completely dead. All the batteries are dead. Even the power bank that I use to charge the batteries, that's died because I've used it to charge the drone. Uh, this is the last battery on my GoPro, which is now flashing. It's 
been a bit of a nightmare with batteries, so I apologise for cutting the trip early. I can charge them up in the car. I'm in back in the truck now, but I need to get back because I've got to pick up jacks. Sadly, that's reality, guys. That's the way it is. Doesn't trips don't always plan out like you want them to. Uh, so I apologise for the trip being cut short. It would have been nice to carry on and, and go fishing and maybe catch a fish, cook it up. Just wasn't going to happen this trip, which is a shame, and I'm a bit gutted. But there's always another trip. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And again, sorry for cutting it short. I'll see you soon, guys.